The main question that I can offer um, in our conversation uh, would be the question of why should we have or not have disabled people in the world? Um, and a related question to that, of course, is what do we gain by eliminating disability and disabled people um, in the way that eugenicists uh, plan and have planned and have um, done so, what do we lose and what do we gain by that? I think that that conversation might be an interesting one for us to engage in. Um, it, it might be, but I don't think that that's the domain in which the moral crunch comes. Mm -hmm. um, the moral crunch, and I'm happy to talk about the question of what do we gain or what do we lose by having disabled people in the world, except that um, disabled is too large a term mm -hmm. to manage. Um, in some ways, all of us are disabled. I, I'm mathematically disabled. There is just no question about that. Uh, and you may be verbally disabled. You may be dyslexic. Um, or you may not be dyslexic. You may be very abled uh, in some ways and disabled in others. So there were very particular things that, um, or the very particular forms of a disability that the practices of prenatal diagnosis, which is what I have looked at carefully uh, in my book, Heredity and Hope, um, and the practices of sterilization, which is what the eugenicists practiced in the first half of the 20th century, those are directed at very particular kinds of disabilities. It's not disability in general. Mm -hmm in which case we'd all be subject to it in some way. Well, that's a good point. And um, the question I think that comes out of that point is, what criteria do we use to select the traits that we don't want or do want in the world? And um, maybe we can talk a little bit about that question. Uh, we could talk, for example, about specific instances, or we can talk in general about some of the traits that are selected for um, elimination. Uh, and usually the criteria for those selections are uh, health, and behind health, of course, is the idea of both suffering, and I'd like to talk a, a bit about that, and the concept of burden. Um, and... Um, Let's go from there. Well, um, why don't you start then? Because you have um, some things you want to add to the conversation about burden, suffering, um, health, and disability. So lay them out. Let's proceed from there. Yeah. Um, I think one of the most important points in trying to think through what kinds of traits uh, we value and don't value um, is to think about how those traits are manifest in a life. For example, um, one of the things that we value and uh, in forming communities is to think about quality of life and to think about uh, potential for contributions to the larger community. And so one argument is that there are certain conditions that will reduce quality of life and that uh, quality of life can be predicted ahead of time. And so I think one of the most important arguments for um, or against the idea of selecting against particular traits is um, the issue of what constitutes a quality of life. And we could talk a bit about very specific kinds of case studies, which might be interesting. Uh, Down syndrome, which, of course, is uh, a kind of iconic form of, uh, of human variation that is uh, understood as, as a form of um, inferiority and a form of of ill health that we want to select for and that we want to generally eliminate. And 
Yet when we have the opportunity to uh, meet people and to talk to people who have people with Down syndrome in their families, they often uh, say that they uh, don't understand uh, the argument for a diminished quality of life uh, that is necessarily associated with the characteristics that we think of as Down syndrome. Um, they do indeed, they do indeed say, that. say that. Um, and I'm not sure, however, um, 